Hello everyone. So this week we are going to talk about searching algorithms. This class is called Introduction to Data Structures and so far we have worked with some data structures. We worked with an array-based list, we worked with a Python or excuse me, a linked list, and we talked about some abstract data types as well, a queue, a stack, an unordered list, a deck. Um, but a big part of data storage is being able to search it, right? So um, we will cover the basic search algorithms and there really aren't that many. Um, and then we will use our discussion of search to talk about a way of doing searching really fast with a particular data structure. But let's just talk, start out with really simple searching and how it works, okay? So throughout this, um, these, this week, I'm going to be referring to uh, search handouts. So yours, when I talk about the search handout, I mean this thing. So you should have a copy of it up somewhere, and in it you will find the algorithms as well as the exercises that we will do during these lectures. Okay. So first of all, let's define what we mean by searching in the context of data structures and algorithms. A search algorithm determines uh, whether an item is present in a collection of items. Easy enough. Is it there or is it not? True or false? Now many search algorithms in computing will also return the index of the item in a list. Where is it in your list, right? This is going to be an integer. What's the index? Is it at index 0? Is it at index 3? Index 4? Just knowing where it is in the list can be useful. All right, so that's all searching is. You're looking through a collection of items, and the only collections we care about right now are lists um, to find out if the thing is there. So we're going to talk about searching list data structures, um, and there are really only three approaches. Pretty simple and pretty intuitive, at least the first two are. Uh, one is, the first is the sequential or linear search. We'll talk about that in this video. Then a smart sequential search, and Finally, a binary search, which is quite different probably than any algorithm you've seen so far. Okay, so what is a sequential search or a linear search? Well, it's how you look for a book in a bookshelf that's not sorted or organized in any way. If you want to find a book in this uh, list of books, well, what would you do? You start at one end or the other, and you go down the list and you say, is this it, is this it, is this it, is this it? And you just go in order, you go sequentially or in a line. That's the premise of sequential or linear search, right? Um, if you've got an unordered list of things, right? Like when I say unordered, I mean the values are in any order whatsoever, right? They're the order that you put them into the list, whether you used appending or adding or inserting, maybe you've removed stuff. The order of the items in the list are based on those fun methods that you call not their values, right? So there's really no better way to search an unordered list than to start at one end at the start and just go down the list, all right? So here's the algorithm for it. You can find this algorithm on your search sheet um, or your search handout. And this is written in pseudocode. This is not valid Python. This is not valid Java. This is not valid anything. This is pseudocode. But it tells you how the, the algorithm works. So um, one of the things we're going to do in this module is get practice tracing algorithms. Okay, so when in doubt of how these algorithms work, go to the pseudocode. Um, what we are mostly interested in though, right? So what we're interested in doing is finding the best search, okay? How do we determine how good a search is? Well, effectively, right, it, we, this is an algorithm, so we can apply a big O analysis to it. And if you did the big O analysis of this algorithm, you would very quickly find that it is big O of n, okay? Number of uh, things that are in the list, okay? So what, were you, or what I will ask you to do when you're thinking of searching is to count the number of comparisons that we're doing as we search. 
So a comparison is whenever, whenever you search, you have a target, the thing you're looking for. A single comparison is when you compare this target to an element in a list. That is one comparison. When you go to the next element of a list and you compare it to the next element, that's a second comparison. Okay, so when you are counting search algorithms, I'm going to ask you in your homework to count the number of comparisons you have to do between a target and an element in the list. That's the comparison. Okay, when it comes down to the algorithm, a single comparison basically equates to a single iteration of a loop. All of these search algorithms we're going to talk about this week run in a loop, right? So one iteration of the loop is equivalent to one comparison. And that matches up, that's going to match up with the big O kind of T of N counting that you do. It's the looping and the size of the list that are going to dominate how efficient these algorithms are. Okay, so let's not get wrapped up in that too much at this point. Let's do it by example and let's count and just make sure we understand how the different search algorithms operate. Like I said, they're mostly straightforward except for binary search, but let's make sure that we know them because you have to know them, right? You've got to know how these different things work. All right, so um, on the third page, I believe it is, of your handout, you will find this example list. Um, and we're going to run through some examples on this list. Okay, so switch over to your page three, and then let's do these examples. So we had a brief uh, technical failure there. I had intended to do this part on the whiteboard, but I had a technology failure. So uh, I will be doing some, this interactively in the slides, but I encourage you to follow along on the uh, third page of your handout and kind of do what I'm doing here. So we're gonna trace the linear search algorithm, also known as the sequential search algorithm. And it's really quite intuitive, right? Um, Basically what happens is here's the algorithm here on the right, and this is on the first page of your handout. Uh, A is the list of things we want to search. So in this case, I'm saying that A is a uh, Python array based list, but the same algorithm will work just fine for a linked list, um, though you'll have to change it just a little bit to handle dot nexts and things like that. Um, n is the number of elements in the list okay um, where am i getting that i'm just getting it from this description right here so what's n how many elements are in a uh, well i believe that there are eight elements in a Oops. let's do it there okay eight elements in a target is the item uh, that we want to search for so i'm going to be doing this first example here uh, sequential search of unsorted lists. Let's look for number 332. Okay, so 332 is what I'm going to be looking for here. Whoops, excuse me. Sorry, this is going to be a little dicey. I'm used to doing this on the board or paper, not on a computer. All right, so let's look at the algorithm. So set found to none. Now again, this is pseudocode, it's not Python. Um, set found to none and set loc a variable to zero. Okay, so these are all variables that we're dealing with here. While loc is less than n, so while location is less than n, the number of elements in the list, and it's not been found, okay, found is none, so it's not found yet, do the following. If the target we're looking for is equal to a sub location, set found equal to that location. So this is an algorithm that is not returning true or false. It is returning the index. Where is the item in the list? And you can very easily check, you know, convert that to a true or false. Is it greater than or equal to zero? Then yeah, it's true. You found it. Um, if it's the, if you, if the target is equal to the item at this index, you found it. Hooray. Otherwise, set loc equal to loc plus one. In other words, move it up a slot, okay? So let's step through this. And our target here is 332, okay? So for those of you who struggle with your debugging, I know this exercise may be a little painful for you. 
please follow this, right? Make sure you can step through an algorithm by hand. It's an important skill to have, okay? So while location is less than n, okay? Zero is less than eight, loc is less than n, and not found, yep, we haven't found it, if target equal equal a sub loc, okay, is 332 equal to a sub zero, loc is zero, right? And what we're saying is location is basically right here. So is this element equal to the target? No, it is not equal to the target. So what do we do? If target equal loc, set loc equal to loc plus one. So move location up a slot, okay, to here, all right? Now we loop back around, let me kill this, sorry, kill o slack. Let me loop back around loc is still less than n and we still haven't found it if target is equal to loc 332 equal to a sub location why yes it is it is here right set found equal to loc okay so my location is one and then we go back up to the while loop right this is important that you understand this when you're tracing loops right I have found it, but now I go back up to my while loop and check the condition. While loc is less than n, it is. One is less than n, and not found. Ah, but I have found something. Found is one. So I exit my loop, and I return found. Okay? So that's it. It kind of climbs up the list sequentially looking for the target. Okay, let's do the next example. The next example, our target is 91. Okay, so this time our target is 91 and we're going to reset our algorithm. Okay, and let's trace. Again, the tracing of this, uh, you're like, Dr. Lehman, I know how this search is going to go. It's still really important that you get the skills of tracing down, of seeing how individual variables change as you go along, okay? So we'll go through this one more time. Um, actually, you know what, for this one, uh, no, for this one, we'll go through it in detail. For the next one, we'll go, we'll kind of skip ahead a little bit, okay? So set found equal to none, set location equal to zero. My target is 91. While location is less than n, that's true, and not found, do the following. If the target is equal to a sub loc, is it equal to it? No. So what do we do? Move a step. Loc gets loc plus one. Loop back around. Loc is still less than n, and it is still not found, so is the target equal to this? Nope. All right. Move the location again. Okay. Loop back around. Neither of our loop conditions are met, so we compare. Is 91, is the target equal to this? Nope. Okay, we step. All right, let's shorten it up now. Kind of, all right, is target equal to this? Nope. Okay, move again. Our loop conditions are still met, right? Basically, while loc less than n, this means have you walked off the end of the list. If not, keep looking. And not found, have you found it? Once you found it, stop. So that maybe is an important thing to call out, right? Linear search stops when it finds the first instance of a thing, right? So target is 91. So is this equal, is a sub loc equal to the target? Yes, it is. So what do I do? Set found equal to the loc, found is four. I exit my if else block, come back up here, and while loc is less than n, it still is, but it is now found, so I'm done. I exit the loop, come down here, and return found, okay? But back to the point, if, let's say we were searching for one, two, three. If we were searching for one, two, three, it would get here and it would stop. Right. The search algorithm is going to stop when it finds the first occasion of the target in the list, and that's okay. Right. All right. So um, 
How many comparisons did we do? Let's ask that question. Well, for 91, we first compared the target to five, three, three, two, two comparisons, six, eight, 91. So I, in total, I did five comparisons to find 91, right? Including the comparison to the actual value. So I did five comparisons here. Now let's look at our next target, which is gonna be 22, okay? So as you quickly scan this list, you'll see, of course, that 22 is not in the list. Now the computer doesn't know that. The computer is not omniscient and it, can't, it can only perceive things one bit at a time, literally. So what's gonna happen here? Let's count the comparisons again. Now you know how linear search works. Look here is our target. Our target is now 22. Is 22 equal to this? No. Move our kind of where we're looking up a spot. Is it equal to this? Nope. No. Location? Nope. 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 Okay, we're here. All right, so now what happens, right? We're at this last part of the loop. And let's say we're just getting ready to inspect location seven, okay? We start our while loop. Is location less than n? Seven, we're at location seven, is less than eight, and we still haven't found it, okay? If target equal equals a sub loc, it does not, right? It does not, three is not equal to 22 then loc gets loc plus one, okay? So loc is eight. So loc is effectively saying here. Well, there is no here, right? So, but we come back up to the while loop. While loc is less than n. Okay? Is eight less than eight? No, eight is equal to eight. Less than or equal to would pass, but that's not true loc is less than eight, is loc is eight less than eight? No. So the loop stops, right? We jump down to the end and we return found. So when we return found here, what are we returning? None, right? It's not there, we didn't find it. So if I get none back from the search algorithm, I know the thing is not in the list, okay? So that's the premise of sequential search. It's very simple. You start at the beginning and you just kind of climb your way up and you say, are you it? 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 No. Okay. Yes or no. And if you found it, return the index of that thing. That's all there is to it. All right. So let's answer some of these questions though. Um, how do you know in looking at this algorithm when the target is not present? Well, when the location is equal to n, you know that the target is not present. That's the case that we just ran into here, okay? Second question. You need to know the answers to these questions, all right? Um, at least when given this, the pseudocode. The linear search compares two objects for equality. What method must be defined in a Python class for it to be comparable with an equality operator, okay? So if you had a list of say, bank accounts, and you want to search through and ask the question, if a sub loc is equal equal to target, and the list is full of bank accounts, and your target is a bank account, what method do you have to define on the bank account class to compare them using the equal equal operator? Well, that is the underscore underscore EQ method, right? underscore underscore EQ. All right, if the data is sorted, can we improve the efficiency? All right, well, think about that for a second. If this list were in order, could we do better? Well, the answer is, yeah, of course it is. That's why we have two other search algorithms, right? And we'll talk about those in a little bit. So, um, other questions, let me back out of these. All right, go back over here. Um, now we're on to, if you're filling in your search handout, we're on to the bottom of the second page, okay? 
So we're asking here the question, the, the slide and the chart are kind of asking the same thing. How many comparisons are required when the target is present in the list? Okay, so again, a comparison is comparing the target to a single element in the list, an individual element of the list. So in the best case, the target is in the list. Where is that target going to be in a sequential search? Well, the best case scenario is that the target is in the first slot. It's in the slot at index zero, right? If it's in that first slot, you only need to do one comparison, right? You only need to do one comparison. Can I get that centered? Hmm. There we go. It's a little better. Interesting. All right. In the best case, it's one comparison. Okay. In the worst case, let's suppose that the target is still in the list. What's the worst case number of comparisons you have to do? Well, the best case is it's at the beginning of the list. You do one comparison. The worst case is that it's at the end of the list. Okay. If you have n items in the list, then that means you need to do n comparisons, again, in the worst case. Right. Okay, now, suppose the target is not in the list. You're searching for something, but it isn't there. Well, how do you know, using sequential search, if an item is not in the list? You know it's not in the list. Remember the answer to our previous question. You know it is not in the list if the location is equal to n. So what that is telling you is you got to go through the whole list to know that an item is not in it. Okay. So there's actually no distinction between the best case scenario and the worst case scenario here. In both cases, let me just fix this up real quick. In both cases, you have to go through n items to find out, right? And that's kind of the, the downside of sequential search. It's an immensely simple algorithm, but if you have a million items, 10 million items, a billion items, the only way you know for sure if something is not in the list is you have to go through and check all billion items, right? That could be slow. If you're, especially if you're doing that check a lot for some reason, you're searching a lot, that could be slow. If it's only a couple thousand items, yeah, whatever, you're not gonna notice that. But if you get into really big data, this could be a problem, searching for something that's not there, right? Um, so that's kind of a sequential search. Uh, next video, we will improve upon this a little bit with a smart sequential search, but we have to transform the data before we can do that. We'll talk about that next time.